Hey, this is Building a Blog with Bootstrap and Rails 5, Part 9. In this episode, we are going to add tags to our blog posts. I found a really cool gem called Access Taggable On, which is a pretty old gem, um, but it looks like it's uh, kept pretty up to date. And I've actually never implemented anything with it, and I thought it might be interesting if I go through the documentation on their uh, GitHub account, and you can just kind of watch me and follow along as I implement it for the first time. So you can kind of, uh, if you haven't done that before, um, maybe it'll help you uh, find your own gems that you like and, and figure out how to use them. So uh, let's just dive in. So I'm just going to go through this installation guide uh, step by step. Didn't mean to open that. And uh, we'll just see what happens, see what roadblocks we hit, and, um, and how it goes. So I'm going to open my gem file, um, and let's jump down here to below where we left off last time. Save that, and then we're going to bundle. I need to stop my server. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so now it's telling us to run rake access taggable on. Let's just uh, go exactly how they say. It. In Rails 5, uh, you could probably run Rails access taggable on, but uh, I'm just going to do pretty much exactly what it says rake db migrate. Now I know this is Rails db migrate. Okay, so looks like it's working. We've added a bunch of stuff to our database about tags. All right, let's see what's next. Um, so we're not using My, MySQL, so we can skip that. All right, so usage. Access taggable, alias for access taggable on tags. Da 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 da. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy this. Um, actually, I'm going to get it with the comment. And we will open up the code over here. So we want to put this on our post model, I think. Yep. Okay, great. What now? Um, so there's some stuff with the controller. I'm going to come back to that. Um, I want to see how the heck can I look at tags. Okay, so this is the point where I'm going to go just see what I can do in the terminal. So if we're on Rails C, and we say post.last post equals post, if I can type. All right, so can I call the tags method now? Okay, so I get an empty array, and there's some SQL telling me that it's trying to look for tags, joining with taggings. Okay, that makes sense. So if I do post dot add tag, maybe it's tags, what was it? Tag list dot add, I can't remember anything today, tag list.add uh, good post um, decent post too long so now I've got some tags um, post.tags okay maybe I need to post.save post.tags post.reload post.tags. <laughs> Sorry, you're just listening to me read over and over and over again. Um, okay, so that's interesting. Let's go back to the docs. I think I saw something about that. I'm just like, so user.tag list equals awesome, slick, hefty, save, reload, tags. Interesting. So the way that I did it, okay, so I screwed that up. So I needed to add the way that I did it, I had one tag in quotes. They have separate, interesting. Okay, so let's do, I'm 
going to remove that one. Post that save. Um, I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to go in and put quotes around these things. Take marks, I guess. See what happens. Post save. Post that reload. Post that tags. Okay, so now I have three tags. Cool. Okay, so there was something else back here that I saw that kind of caught my eye, which is this parse true. And I think um, it was related to passing in one string. So I'm going to pass in like Batman. Iron Man and Catwoman and then I think we can say parse true and it split those into an array when I did it that way so if you pass it a single comma separated string and pass it parse true it will split it and then we could do post.save post.reload and post.tags and we should have six Nope, what happened there? Oh, I typed in remove, so those tags weren't there in the first place. I need to add, get in trouble hitting the up arrow. Okay, now I'm gonna do uh, save and reload. Now we have six tags. Okay, so I kind of have a feel for how that works now. If we look back in the browser. Um, so you can see that we can directly set the tag list like this um, and then do the same kind of process. If you do this, it will, it looks like remove all the previous tags. So um, in our case, if we had set the Batman, Iron Man, Catwoman like this, we would have lost the original three tags. Um, let's see. Looks like you can use uh, if you if you use access taggable on skills, you can do like you can call it whatever you want. I guess so you can do skills list or what have you. Um, skill counts is telling me maybe we can do something like uh, post tag counts. Is that a thing? What happened there? It's telling me it's just giving my tag back. Interesting. Oh, that's what, they, that's what it outputs here. Hmm. Anyway, I would have thought that would have given me... Uh, I would have thought that would have told me to count more obviously than that. Anyway, I need to read up on that maybe. Um, da -da -da -da. Okay, so we can do some stuff here. Access taggable on tag most use least to use. Um, okay, so it gives me all the tags sorted by most used. Um, I assume because I have a zero at the end of the list. If I do least use, maybe the zero is at the front of the list. All right. Da 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 da. Dynamic tag context, there's some kind of advanced usage stuff here, tag cloud calculations. Okay, I'll get into this a little bit later. Let's try to get this set up so that we can save tags and edit tags on, on our actual blog post. So earlier, back up at the top, I skipped this uh, user params deal. So in our post params, we need to add the tag list. So we'll start there. Where am I? Here we go. Post controller. Um, and we want to do the authors one because the author will be submitting this. So down here, we'll just add tag list. Okay. Um, then let's see. 
we look in views, authors, posts, form. Let's add a let's add a text area here. Um, just uh, call it tag list. Actually, let's call this um, like that. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Start up our server. My posts, let's edit this one and see what we have. Okay, so we see our tags here from when we entered them in the uh, console, that's good. So I should probably have to do something else, but I'm just gonna try to type in some stuff here and say uh, bicycles, uh, VHS tapes, and Brooklyn. Just pull in some random stuff out of my made up post text there. Let's see what this does. I have no idea. Post was successfully updated, edit. Huh. Okay, so it just kind of works out of the box, maybe. Um, let's go back to our terminal. I'm gonna go to a new tab, Rails C. All right, so I have some kind of field going on there. Okay, I think I had a Ruby version issue earlier. Um, anyway, so if we do post, what did I? Uh, this is gonna be annoying. Post equals post at last. Whoa, something blew up. That's a long stack trace. Jeez. What in the world? Crash. I don't know what that is off the top of my head, so let's try it again. All right, so I have no idea. All right, so let's just keep going because that's freaking weird. Let's see what happens. Let me stop that server. Um, let's try to restart the server and see what happens, see if it blows up, okay. So can I refresh this? Okay, this is getting stranger by the minute. Rail C, post equals post dot last. What on earth? After some poking around, I'm not 100% sure what's happening. Um, but I think it could be with the adapter for SQLite 3. So I'm at this point uh, gonna switch to PostgreSQL. Um, we're gonna do that anyway for deployment purposes in a future episode, so let's go ahead and just do it now. So instead of SQLite 3 here, you're gonna change this to PG. Uh, then jump back over to your uh, terminal and bundle. Um, once you do that, you need to um, change your uh, change your database.yml file to match this. From there, you need to run Rails DB create and Rails DB migrate. Now, this is going to create a new database for us, and it will be empty. So let's see if I'm see post account okay so no post at least it doesn't blow up but that could be because I didn't do anything stupid yet so let's see what happens let's run our server uh, let's see we have to do a few things so rails s so when I refresh back over here there won't be any post because we have a new database um, so I need to do um, uh, 
maybe that's authors. Hmm. I forget how we did this exactly before. So let me look in routes. So we have device for authors, which tells me probably that if we look at author. Um, we don't have registerable in there, so that means I need to run into the terminal. We'll do author dot see what author dot new. What are the fields? Author equals underscore. We'll set that variable equal to the last thing. Author dot name equals Jim Bob. Author dot email equals Jim Bob test IBC. Author dot password equals password. And author dot password confirmation equals password. Author dot save. Okay, now I should be able to sign in. I restart my server. I'll jump back in here. I should be authors sign underscore in. And we'll do Jim Bob test IABC password is password. And we're signed in. I don't need to save that. My post, new post. Um, Hipsum is the website where I get my fake copy because it's funny. Heirloom 3 is a good post title, maybe. Let's grab the first couple lines for the description. Um, let's see here. Pexels. What are we looking at here? Heirloom. No pictures. Uh, that's not really funny. Uh, it doesn't matter. Let's just go back to the home page and grab something random. Copy image address. Okay, so let's save this and I post, okay. So let's check the server or the terminal again, go into the console, post equals post off first. Okay, so I'm curious about if I broke it because I typed in some stuff here, which if is the case, feels like a bug. Okay, let's save it. All right, um, let me go back here and Okay. Okay, so that straight up works. I don't know what happened with that on the other database. Um, I read something about capital letters, so let's try a capital letter and no, I mean it works fine. Okay. I forgot to mention earlier when we switched from uh, SQLite 3 to Postgres, some of you may be freaking out like, holy crap, this doesn't work. Uh, you will need to set up Postgres on your computer. Um, so I'm not gonna get into exactly how to set everything up. I mean, there's a variety of ways um, and it's gonna depend very heavily on what operating system you're on and what version and all of that. Um, I used this postgres.app on Mac originally. I think you can do homebrew. Um, 
I apologize in advance because I remember it being a little bit of a headache, but it is probably the most commonly used thing with Rails. So uh, go ahead and invest the time to make sure you can figure out how to install Postgres. Um, and if you need help, um, I'm sure there's plenty of help available on Stack Overflow for that. Or you can post in the comments and I will do my best, but installation is not really my expertise. Okay, so let's get back to work on the other side of this. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and publish my post here. Um, now if I go back to my homepage, I should have my post. Um, I'm going to just straight up print out the tags on the index page. So we're rendering the posts, okay. Okay, so let's see here. Um, let's just print it out and see what it looks like. Post.tags. Um, well, let's just see what it does. Probably gonna be, yep, it's on junk. Um, I'm gonna make a guess and then I'm gonna go look when it's wrong. Okay, that didn't do anything. Okay, let's see. Okay, so each tag has a name. So we can do post.tags.map and name dot join comma space. And let's see what that looks like. Okay. That's not pretty, but it is at least printing some stuff out for now. Okay, so what else could we do instead of that? Um, hmm, so let's try something. Let's do this. Let's say map, and then I'm going to go to more like the long form, and we'll just call that tag T. And we'll say link to t.name. And then for now, we'll just do that. And let's see what that does. Okay, so I need to come in here and say, um, raw in front maybe. Okay. So, just a word of warning, if you're ever using like raw or you can do a simple format as a similar one or there's HTML safe if you call it on the end, be really careful with that stuff because it's typically not what you want to use. Um, particularly if it's anything a user enters, you have to be really careful with it. Okay, so now I have a list here. Um, let's see. I would like to link this back to um, my posts controller, post path maybe. Um, yeah, so let's do um, post path, and we'll do tag is T. Okay, so now if I click on mixtape, it's gonna take me to post tag equals one, tag equals two, tag equals three. That's funny. I'm gonna say t dot name. All right, so now tax, or tag equals mixtape, typewriter, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's look back at the access taggable documentation. Um, so what we are worried about now is finding tagged objects. So we're going to use this tagged with method that's really neat here. So um, you see, it looks like it accepts a single argument or an array of arguments with uh, some various specifications. For the moment, I'm just going to worry about the single. Um, looks like if you want to take this further, you could do some fancy stuff with how you want to handle if multiple tags are selected. Um, for the moment though, I just got one tag, so 
I want to go back to my post controller. And I basically want to say if params tag dot present else. And this is actually the else condition here. Otherwise, I want to say dot um, tagged with params tag. So if I refresh, that's still going to be there because it's tagged with typewriter. If I type in something else like Billy Bob, there won't be anything because uh, there's no tags for that. So assuming you made it this far, we should be able to, or you should be able to create some more posts and add some tags. So, and I'm not, I'm not gonna go to do anything else except to say, uh, like, let's do our Batman, Iron Man, and what was that one, XOXO, that's one of the ones. So if we go back to our things, publish, Blog. Okay, so if I click on Iron Man, I should just have that one. If I click on XOXO, we have that. Typewriter, it's just that one. So obviously this is working. Okay, so let's jump back to the controller. So this code, uh, we have one if condition and some really nasty nested stuff here. Um, so I'm noticing a few things. So first of all, I made a little bit of an error previously, uh, which I just now saw. So if you notice, we have post, most recent, published, tagged with, da 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 da, so on and so forth. And then down here, we just have post, friendly, find, params, ID. So let's do something. So let me clear the... So technically, at this point, we have tags working. So everything from this moment on is sort of bonus content. We're going to refactor a little bit, fix a little bit of a glitch, and um, maybe do a little bit of styling if I feel like I have time. All right, so I'm going to open this post in a, I don't want a new window. I want a new tab, maybe. OK, so I've got this post in a new tab. Now let's do something funny. So if I come back over here and I unpublish it, and then I go here, it won't show up. But here, what's going to happen? So I can still see it. So let me actually open this in an incognito window and see if I can see it. So this is bizarre. So you have a published post, or an unpublished post, that's showing up to a non-signed-in user. And I caught this because there's nothing here requiring it to be published. So technically what we need is published to go there. So now if I try to refresh this here, it's going to throw an error because uh, it can't find a post without an ID and so on and so forth. Okay, so we may want to handle that later um, with the 404. Well, I think that would throw a 404 on production anyway. At any rate, that's not the point that I was trying to make. So I just wanted to make the point that we did not scope that properly. So once you see that and you can see the scoping, um, one thing I do sometimes um, is I will kind of define. So you can look on here and you see like, it's a little easier maybe if I rearrange this a little bit. So if I take that and I do publish dot most recent. Now we've got post publish is our first thing. So we can do um, create a method called storage, which represents our database for finding posts. Um, so we'll say um, at storage or equals post.published. Actually, I don't think I need to do that. We'll just say post.published for now. Um, so here I can say storage, if I could spell it. And then here I can also say storage. And then here we can change this to storage. 
So that's starting to remove a little bit of duplication. Let's just make sure that it's working. Yep. All right, so the other part of this, um, so this first part I pulled out down here because it's used in both places. So we wanna make sure that no matter what we're showing in this controller, uh, that it's published. Now you could think of some other ways to do that, but I feel like this is the most straightforward to me. Um, other people may disagree. Um, anyway, that's how I would probably do it in this case. This part up here though is specific to the index action. And I'm going to create a method on the post uh, class that's gonna handle this. So if we open up post, So I'm just going to define a class method, which means you can call it directly on the post class. Um, and let's call it, um, for now, let's just call it list for, um, let's say, page and tag. Okay, so now we'll say, um, copy this paste this in here and then we'll say if tag dot present and then and then we need to change this to be tag Paginate page, and then we can say page. Okay, so we also don't need this post thing here because we're gonna do that outside. You know what, I think I'm going to change this and I'm just gonna make this a scope. List for I need to give it page, tag, do, and then we'll move all this up. Get rid of this. Okay, so I'm not totally in love with this method yet. Um, so what the putting in a scope is gonna allow us to chain these things together. So back here, I should be able to say at posts equals storage dot for uh, list for params page params tag and I have a extra parenthesis. All right, let's refresh this and see what it does. So I need to go back here. Okay, and if I click a tag, all right, good. And if I go to and page equals two, I should get nothing back. If I go to and page equals one. So that's kind of telling me everything seems to be working. I, you know, I could probably test this quite a bit more, um, but I'm okay with this for the moment. So um, for all the people who are new to, to doing Rails or development in general, what we're doing here is a pattern where we're trying to keep our controllers thin. So anytime you start to see conditionals and logic in a controller, it's kind of a red flag that you're doing something wrong. We're not necessarily wrong, it's just kind of bad form and it could come back and hurt you later. Um, so we moved it to the model and in the model we could take a little bit of time and clean it up a little bit more. Um, so one thing I'm gonna do is actually rearrange this a little bit so we can see that this is pretty much identical here um, on the first bit. So let me just refresh on my on the other side and just make sure that still works. I haven't broken anything. Um, if this were a real project, we would probably want some automated tests that we'd be running with RSpec or something. Maybe we'll cover that later. Um, that would tell you that this is still working because you know going and refreshing a screen isn't really thorough but for the moment this is pretty simple so i'm not really worried okay so to move on 
Um, whenever you're doing some refactoring or cleanup, uh, one of the things you want to do is try to make things look as similar as you possibly can. So that's kind of why I'm being a little bit um, slow about this. And we've got this to where these lines are almost identical. So in theory, what we would like to do is something where we basically say, uh, where we take these things, and then these things go away to basically be like that. And what we can do actually is say scope, that's obviously a bad name and we're gonna change that in a moment. Um, but we can pass that in like that. And let's see if that works. No, it does not. Okay, so I need to pass in a page. So something page. All right. Oh, I need to tell it that there's going to be a page. All right. So now we can click around and it works. Okay, so let's name this thing. So let's just call it recent paginated. All right. At this point, we've got something that's pretty straightforward and I'm going to take it a little bit further just because I want to. Um, but it's a little bit um, unnecessary maybe. It just depends on um, you know, your preference. Um, so some people might say this and say, oh, well, we could clean this up where you could say, um, you could do like a ternary operator and say tag.present, question mark, question mark. And then we could take this say okay if I have a tag do that otherwise do recent paginated page okay so now we have a one line query and that's all right but it's kind of hiding something something and what I want to point out here is just that you know a method or a scope or whatever you really want it to be doing one thing and this is really doing a couple things. We're deciding what to do if there's no tag, and we're also um, chaining together the appropriate queries, um, which again, is not horrible in this instance, but what I would like to do is be able to say like, um, let's imagine this is like uh, with tag. So this method doesn't actually exist yet. Okay, so now those things are identical. And we could write another scope with tag, tag. And this is only going to, let's see, hold on, I forgot what the built-in method on the gym is called. Tagged with with tag, maybe a bad name, we'll see in a second. Okay, so the only thing this is gonna do is if tag.present, then it's gonna say um, tagged with tag, if tag.present, that's it. So we have one line, and actually, now that I see that, let's do this. All right, so now we have a method that's handling the if logic. So it's saying, if the tag is present, chain on this tag thing. Otherwise, it's not gonna do anything. Um, then down here, these things are identical now, so we don't need a uh, conditional. So we have recent paginated with tag tag and then the with tag method handles whether or not we have a tag. Okay, so let's try that. So, works there, works here. 
Let's go back and let's publish our post so that we can um, see it in action here. So if we do XOXO, they're both here. If we do Iron Man, it's just that one. Mixtape, it's just that one. So it looks like it's working just fine. And you can see that like now we have a single method that's responsibility um, is just to chain these two calls together. We have another method that just exists to decide what to do if, or there, if there's a tag or not. Uh, we have another one that's just getting the recently paginated. So I feel like this is a pretty nice, you know, compact, everything is super small chunks that are easy to understand. Um, you could have stopped a long time ago, but this is how I would do it. All right, so there's two less tiny stylistic things that I would do here. I would change this to page, page. And this I'm gonna set as a constant so that it's easy to find and uh, swap out. So if we go back and check that out, it should be just fine. Okay. All right, so this episode went really long. If you're still here, thanks for watching. Um, I'm gonna do an episode in the near future where we clean up a lot of the styles on the front end. Um, probably just one episode dedicated to me tweaking some designs so you can kind of uh, you know, get a little bit of an idea of my process as far as that goes and also make your app look a little bit better. It's starting to be a little bit wonky. Um, I think next time we're gonna do comments. After that, we're gonna add a full text search, which we should be able to do now that we have Postgres. And once we have all that, we're gonna deploy it to Heroku. I know this has been long. I hope you found this uh, interesting and helpful and I will talk to you next time.